Well, my friends, we all know that automation is everywhere and certainly behind me, standing over me, it looks like the claw's about to grab Shady and I. And we are here today to talk about this unique project. It's not every day we get to see well, something like this. I used the word unique already, but I'll use it again because we see automation on a regular basis on the MTD channel, loading and unloading machines, doing some pretty basic cobot, robot operations, and we hear about it and we know the importance of automation, but this one specifically, I see automation as one of those types of companies that can do something so unique and so special that if you need that impossible type job they turn it into i'm possible so shady let's talk about what this is i know you were the guy that kind of went out put this all together made the magic happen how did this all come together well it actually started with a customer request uh last summer uh saying that they've got these utility poles that needed to be uh, processed drilled cut uh, machined, uh, printed on, and then, you know, it's an easy project. Put together a little machine that could do it. We're like, okay, yeah, send me the RFQ over and we'll, we'll take a look at it. <laughs> so then going through everything, we realized we got some pretty serious size up holes looked scattered around that we needed to be able to process here. Uh, so trying to come up with a, a flexible way to handle that kind of automation. It's like, how are we going to do this? Either with a fixed machine or do we go full robot? because uh, we can go diff two different routes. They were expecting traditional fixed machinery. We were like, well, let's, let's try the robot approach. I think it's going to leave us more flexible. So we did. We put together some models and simulations uh, utilizing uh, this FANUC M2000 uh, that's got the payload capacity to pick up the, the uh, robot, uh, the poles. And then uh, from there, we went through putting together the, uh, the chuck designs and all the stuff around it that we need to internally fabricate and make to, uh, to process these poles. A uh, customer liked uh, the concept and decided to give it a shot. Oh, Shady, I'm looking around and it looks super simple. Obviously it doesn't, and I'm very much kidding about that, but I got to watch this run. And what's really neat about it is you have safety measures everywhere, first oh, of all, which is so important. Absolutely. You have tool changing, because you're actually machining pieces of this. Yep. You're actually printing on these parts as well. And right. there were some complications on a previous method, as we've discussed before, about dust getting on the part and which order to do certain things right so while this might look easy and i know it doesn't it's not easy at all you guys put a lot of science and math into this yeah so the, the customer had a process that they typically wanted where it was you know uh cut the end off first then uh, do the uh, machining and then do the printing well going through the process we realized that they were complaining about dirty print heads always needed to be cleaned we realized it's because there's always dust after you cut mill so it made a much more reliable uh, printing process if we actually print first before the pole gets dusty. So we modify the sequence with their approval and back like, listen, we think that you'll have better longevity out of your print heads, you'll have better, better quality prints because you won't have dust causing lines as you print. So uh, they allowed us to make the switch and they were very happy with the results. The, uh, the print quality is far better than what they're used to. And can we talk about that for just a minute? Because when we come to finding a solution, and I know you're a solutions-based company, not selling a product, you're selling a solution, you're creating a, a solution for a customer. What were some of the issues that they previously had? Because I know that this is going into different places around the world now, and we believe there's even yeah. more coming because right. of what your expertise was able to bring to the table. Right, so uh, some of the difficulties was actually uh, processing the different size of poles. Uh, and one of the biggest difficulties as well was the ability to do custom processing. So a lot of these poles are built to a standard print. Uh, occasionally they'll get custom requests uh, from their customers saying we need different hole patterns and their traditional machinery can't adapt to that. It's custom built to handle that process. So with our setup, they can actually load 3D models of the pole with the desired cut sequence and that'll generate the code on the fly for this robot. And then they can go through and process out custom poles, which they could never do before. That would have been a hand operation in the past. So now it's part of the automation process. They just send it right through. Well, that seems easy enough. <laughs> Definitely not. I know I've said that just to kind of make the well, joke it's about working it. now. So it gets, it's easy. Well, well, it is working and yeah. it's working in a profound way that it's not just one going out the door. There's yeah. multiples and this process will continue to be improved, of right. course, like we always do, but it's right. going to continue to grow in these right. projects as well. Yep. So congratulations on putting this Thank all you. together. I'm sure your engineering team looked at you and was like, Thank you so much, Shady. We appreciate this. Oh, yeah. Day one, they looked at this like, what the heck? <laughs> I don't want to touch this. But it was a fun process. Well, and, and they helped develop the overall concept as well. They were, we were sat down all together and did some crazy brainstorming, came up with this great idea. And 
Uh, Shani, we're going to talk more about that with your teammates, and I'm Perfect. excited to do that because I do want to get their perspective yep. when a project comes together, when an idea comes together, and we say we can do this, and then the engineers picking up. A lot of times, the engineers go, "What have you done to me?" Right? But you guys are able to do it over and over yep. and over again with that unique cap capability to do machining and welding, and you're manufacturing so much. This isn't. I'm going to pick this guy, this guy, this guy from all these different companies from the shelf, put it together like a bunch of Lego systems you're yeah. making these things right uh so uh, yeah we're not just a you know a, a typical off-the-shelf kind of company where we just oh this person makes this this person makes this let's just put it together and, and off it goes a lot of times it doesn't exist so like nobody's out there making spindles that can spin a 50-foot telephone pole we right have to make that so are we have i i in my opinion the best engineers in the country working on putting together these designs these concepts and just making it work Shady, you're the man. I have Thanks. one last question for you yeah. before we get off camera. Yep. You think you can have that thing pick me up and, and tote me around like a pole? We, we'd get yeah. in trouble for that, wouldn't uh, we? If the camera's off, maybe. No, we can't do that. No, We're definitely do not going to do that. <laughs> I hope you've all enjoyed this conversation. This is something that fascinates me. It's something I've never seen before. And the world of automation continues to grow with the vision systems and the safety capabilities and everything that goes into being a custom IC automation. I've made the bad joke before. I'm going to make it again. I see automation and i'm now you are as well thank you so much for watching we appreciate your time you sir are incredible thank you